but uh, good. Smashing. I mean, the race went according to plan. No problems at all. It looked very easy. Yeah, you know, he was he jumped out. The the two pacemakers were up there. Uh, the the jumper of. Uh, and the pacemaker of Mr. Britain's were going, yeah, nice, good, even pace. I was quite happy. He was very lazy, you know, he was nice and relaxed, he was, you know, so I was sort of always hoping that when, when I picked him up, he was going to find what I thought he would, but, yeah. you know, I had to sort of, I was kidding myself most of the way around, and when I got down the bottom bend, you know, I just sort of picked him up a little bit, and he came on the bridle, you know, and picked up very well. Here you are, coming out the two He loves the ground, and he's an improving horse, and, you know, he's done it very well today. Kieran Fallon, who finished second, said he thought he had every chance, but when he saw you press the button, you found the other gear. Yeah, well, that's what this horse says. He's, he's got a gear, which is, uh, you know, what good horses have, you know. Um, he can quicken up, and he loves the ground. He's, as we said, he's improving his form, you know, at Newmarket with uh, Asatis and Carroll House. has worked out very, very well. You know, I should think Carroll House will run very well in the arc, you know, and... Uh, I think, you know, this horse has done it well. It'll be a nice horse next year. I mean, he's only run four times. He's still basically a big baby. That's right. How do you rate him? Well, I rate him as a very nice horse who's improving, who I think will be a very nice horse next year. And just final question, you've won the St. Ledger at Doncaster. Now you've won it at Air. How did it feel from a jockey's point of view, winning the world's oldest classic here at a new venue? Well, I'm, I've ridden a lot of times at Air. I think Air is a very good course. It's a very fair course. Um, whenever the ground gets cut up and you're, you're running the big race on the last day, it's always a little bit difficult. I mean, there's not really any good ground out there. But luckily, my horse likes cutting the ground, so it's, it, worked, it suited me okay. But uh, as far as the place, the Scottish crowd's fantastic. You know, they enjoy racing, you know, and it's good to, good to be here. It's good to be here. Congratulations, Steve Coulton. Thank you. Well done. Steve Coulton, as popular as ever, and the biggest cheer here. We're going to take a short break, but get pencil and paper at the ready, because we're going to give you a chance to come with us to Paris, and that's coming up right after the break. Ah, Mr. Enderby, uh, regarding our funding requirements for these extra delivery vans, have you uh, reached your final decision? Well, in recent months, your company has enjoyed a marked upturn. 25% increase on orders, profit forecast up a third. Nevertheless, a financial commitment of this size, we must always consider the possibility of a flash in the pan. Flash in the... Laddie. The Enterprise Initiative. This could put matters in a rather different light. The Enterprise Initiative is helping more and more companies grow by putting them in touch with independent experts in areas like marketing and design. They obviously recognized a company with an enterprising streak. What's more, we'll pay up to two-thirds of the consultancy cost. The Enterprise Initiative. Phone the DTI on 0800 500 200 for more information. And that's not all. If you're a first-time buyer, call into any Halifax Building Society branch and we'll give you something to make you more comfortable in your new home. 1% of our rate for Easy Start mortgages for the first year. Can I help you? He wants to run away. And I'm going with him. Where did you have in mind? Spain? Portugal? Greece? And there's up to £50 off per person. Actually, you rather go there. That's going to cost a bit more. We don't mind sharing. Nor do we. You better book a room for them as well. We'll help you run away to your perfect holiday. Don't just book it. Thomas, cook it. Are you ready? 
was your hair? Oh, it's being done. Hair! Quickly, what am I going to say? Right. A, it's called the Sunday Correspondent. B, it's a quality newspaper. C, it's not owned by a press baron. And D, it's concise and manageable. Right. Okay. And don't worry yourself about E and F. Okay, okay here we go. Okay. Auto, Q, goody. The Sunday Correspondent. Tomorrow's Sunday. You too can have a breakfast like mine. The Kellogg's Special K breakfast with delicious malty flakes has only 190 calories. When you're eating a sensible diet, every little helps. Get in shape, lose the fat. Chilly, isn't it? Now then, it's time for our Chiga Pridalak to Triumph weekend competition. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give you two sets of words, each of which is an anagram for the name of a well-known French-trained horse from the last ten years. Here they are. First of all, Polo Minta, P-O-L-O, -O, Polo Minta. And secondly, Perch Lost in Deep. Four words there, Perch Lost in Deep. Well, we want you to put your solution to that query, the two names of two well-known French-trained horses, on a postcard and send it to this address. The Chiga Channel 4 competition, Post Office Box 42, Newmarket, Suffolk. CB8 8HL. Now we'll be drawing the lucky winning combination on October the 4th at Sandown, and that's only three days before the lucky pair will be setting sail for Paris. So, would you please, if you have a telephone, put your telephone number as well as your address on the postcard? The prize, I promise you, is worth stretching your brains for. It uh, includes Flights to Paris, of course, for two, a fortnight today, then transfers to the very luxurious Hotel Maurice, and at that hotel, you will have uh, two dinners, bed and breakfast, of course, and transport to Longchamp, to the race course at Longchamp, and two delicious lunches, quite apart from the racing, at the track. And if you've recovered from all that, the flight home as well. I really think it is a prize worth trying for, uh, we're stretching your mind, you might say. So here are the words again. Polo Minta, Polo Minta, and Perch Lost in Deep. And the names, of course, aren't necessarily the same number of words, but they are the same number of letters. Each of them is an anagram for a well-known French-trained horse. And here again is the address. Uh, Shiga Channel 4 competition, Post Office Box 42, Newmarket, Suffolk, CB8, 8, 8 H HL. The very best of luck. I hope you s hope we see you at Longchamp. And here's a roundup of results from around the country, starting at Newbury with the two o'clock, seven Rivers Rhapsody, fifteen to two, nine India's Twist, twenty-five to one, and two Brisas at nine to one. The 2.30, 5 Rashi, 7 to 1 co favourite, 6 Cossack Guard, 11 to 1, 10 Shoot Ahead, 7 to 1 co favourite, and 12 Indubitable at 16 to 1. The 3 o'clock, 13 Monastery, 7 to 1, 8 Splendid Career, 9 to 4 favourite, 10 Inard, 16 to 1, 5 Ottergale at 20 to 1. The 3.30, 6 Wellney, 9 to 1, 1 Something Different, 8 to 1, 4 Old Alliance, the 5 to 2 favourite. Four o'clock, seven dancing tribute, eleven to four favourite, three point house, four to one, ten guest artiste at three to one. Catrick, the two fifteen, six matching lines, ten to one, three echo princess at six to one, and two key shift at five to one. The two forty five, three Browry Fee, nine to one, six Gots Desire, two to one favourite, and four Bally Bray, thirteen to two. The three fifteen, twelve Grey Rum at twelve to one, two Stelby, fourteen to one. Four cool enough, nine to four favourite, and five secret liaison, twelve to one. 
the 345, three travelling tryst, five to one. One retouch, the five to four on favourite, and six Rincon at four to one. Worcester, the 230, four Cone Lane, 16 to one. Eight Soldier Brave, 11 to two. Three Bright Sapphire, nine to four favourite. The three o'clock, one Broad Beam, nine to two. Three Brosh, nine to four favourite. And seven Baby Sai, 13 to two. The 3.30, one Sunny Hill Lad, 6 to 1, 12 on his own, 16 to 1, and 6 Sunday for Monday at 14 to 1. The 4 o'clock, two Western Counties, 11 to 8 joint favourite, 6 Handy Lane, the other 11 to 8 joint favourite, and 4 Cannon Class, 22 to 1. Market Brazen, 2 o'clock, two Fiery Sun, 5 to 1, three Isobar, 11 to 4 favourite, and 6 Samovar, 8 to 1. The 2.30, two Hazy Sunset, 11 to 4, Three Triford, 13 to 8 favourite, and four Brunton Park, 11 to 4. The three o'clock, one Blake Sun, 9 to 4, five Platonic Affair, 7 to 4 favourite, and two San Carlos, 15 to 2. The 3.30, nine Ockley, 12 to 1, 13 Watershed at 8 to 1, and 17 Sveltissima at 10 to 1. The four o'clock, one by number five Indian at 28 to 1, two Trafalgar Blue, 4 to 1, and four straight down, 11 to 4. And the, a recap on the SP of the Ledger Stakes here at air, the 3.45, won by number three, Michelozzo, 6-4 favourite, second number five, Sapiens at 15-1, and third number eight, Rosie at turn at 5-2, and eight round. Well, when Charles and George wins the St. Ledger, he does it in style. Bruni is winner 14 years ago, won by 10 lengths, eight lengths, Michelozzo here. Not record distance is the derby winner, never say die, won by 12 lengths in 1954. And other winners by 10 lengths were Provoke and Talma and the great Alcide, won by eight lengths in 1958. But you'd get few easier St. Ledger winners than that. And the, and the bookmakers really were hit for it. Great big, huge bets going round the ring. And the public joined in. You remember yesterday, the minute, even the Minister of Sport, Colin Moynihan, he managed to suss out the winner, Michelot, so everyone seemed to know that the horse would win. And the official time for the race actually was 3 minutes 20.72. 3 minutes 20.72. The betting here very early, wide open, is 8-1 to one against Charming Molly and Mystery Music, 9-1 to one against Positive Attitude, and then it's 11-1 to one against Eradicate. But I just have to say one word for the Scottish crowd here. They're a tremendous crowd. We've had great fun here. Unfortunately, just one or two, that is all. Otherwise, I'm having a super time here. Don't be put off coming racing in Scotland. They are a great lot bar one or two absolute lunatics only one lunatic allowed on air race course today that's me <laughs> get the beery <laughs> well coming up is the most hotly contested race of the day it's the labrooks Ayrshire handicap which this year has been given a prize money boost to 20,000 pounds 24 runners going for it over a mile here's the full list and it's also having a change of distance as well. Number one, Homo Sapien, ridden by Michael Hills. Number two, Eradicate Steve Cawthon. Number three, Charming Molly, ridden by Tony Cruz. Number four, Mystery Music, Len Franco Tatori. Number five, Positive Attitude is Blinkered, Willie Carson Rides. Number six, Rosiette Lodge, and that's the partner of Dean McEwer. Number seven is Chica Mir, Kieran Fallon. Number eight, Prophet Aprandra, Michael Wiggum. Nine, Sharon's Royale, Nick Connaughton. Ten, Royal Estimate, Kevin Daly. Number 11, Father Time, Mark Birch. 12, Deputy Tim, Alan Mackay. 13, Bold Try, Kim Tinkler. Number 14 is Golden Bird, Jimmy Fortune Rides. Claims of five. Number 15, Siak. John Carroll puts up one pound overweight. 16, Admiralty Way, Alan Mercer. 17, Gin and Orange, John Lowe. Number 18, Cirque, written by Gary Hind, who claims of five. And Cirque is blinkered. Number 19, Angel's Kiss, Visor for the first time. Neil Gwillems puts up two pound over. Number 20, it's me, Ernie Johnson, one pat over. Number 21, Swing Lucky is blinkered, written by Neil Kennedy. 22, Island Jet Setter, John Birch, claims seven. 23, Vinton Vaz, Steve Wood, 24, majority holding Gary Bardwell. A 24 runner lineup then for this mile race. And the odds on offer as the runners are down at the start look like this. And we have joint favourites, Charming Molly and Positive Attitude, both at eight to one. Mystery Music is nine to one from AIDS and Eradicate 11 to one from 10 to one. Sharon's Royale is 14 to 1 from 10s, and Deputy Tim, Island Jet Setter, and Rosie at Lodge, and Royal Estimate also on 14s. They go 16s bar. Well, they say follow a filly who hits form at this time of the year, and a horse who fits that category is number four. There, Mystery Music, the mount of Frankie de Tori. She's onto the hat trick, having won comfortably at Brighton last time out, and before that, at Kempton. 
They're inside the final quarter of a mile, and Smooth Flight is the leader. Smooth Flight from Marcinella with Amethystine making good ground up on the wide outside. And just coming into your picture is Fen Far in the pale pink. Down below the distance now, Smooth Flight bidding to make all, but being strongly challenged now by Mystery Music, who's come right through with Ray Cotton. It's Mystery Music who's come to take it up. She goes on now and draws away as they come up towards the line. It's going to be another for Ray Cochran with Mystery Music from the early leader, Smooth Flight. Slender Bender takes third. Bang in form and winning Perfect. impressively too. But of course, the uh, ground today is much different. She's gone up in the handicap, but she should still run well. Certainly, I was surprised that she was quick enough to win at Brighton. She looked to be doing all of her best work at the end of that race we saw at Kempton, but she came out and won quite nicely at Kempton on firm ground. Nothing to say that she's not going to handle this off and certainly won with a chance. It's got to be said that it's not the greatest turnout for this £17,000 first prize, Jim, but uh, nonetheless, there's plenty of runners and uh, there's plenty of fancied horses. Very competitive. Charming Molly backed. That one wearing white colours, red sash, striped cap. Tony Cruz taking them out there uh, for Michael Stout. And Charming Molly's a filly by diocese. And basically, she's been disappointing this season. But it could be that she requires some given the ground because she was a promising two-year-old, winning her only race on good to soft ground. But this year, she's been back two or three occasions, not come up with the goods. And at one time, John, she was even entered in the Coronation Stakes and the Sussex Stakes. Yeah, she obviously shows a lot more at home than she's been showing this, or certainly been showing more recently on the race course and at York when the ground was very firm well she finished a long way behind Greensmith she's been taken on a couple of decent horses but I would imagine that uh, Michael Stout will be hoping in actual fact um, hoping that uh, she shows a little bit more on this ground she's just uh, one of several with a chance you saw what an open betting heat it was earlier Tony Cruz here, presumably riding it air for the very first time. And she'll be going into stall 18. But as I said earlier, it looks an open betting heat. We'll take news from John McCurick. Certainly is Jimbo, very wide range. They're going eight to one the field again. Positive attitude was nine. It's now back to eight to one. Charming Molly's solid at eight to one. They're going nine mystery music. Those summer two bookmakers are calling ten to one against mystery music. Profit up Rondra on the slide out of 14 to one. 14 to one Deputy Tim. But a significant support, I think, for 22 Island Jet Setter. PM Racing in Dublin went 25 to 1 this morning. It's into 12 to 1 here on the course, and it's 11 to 1 against Eradicate and 14 and 16 bar. Wide open heat, whoever you fancy, you'll certainly get a decent prize for it. And a very quick joke one punter just come up to me and said, Do you want a tip for air? I said, Well, it'll be rather handy, yes. Open your window, he said. Yeah. Do you think you've been reading the Beano? <laughs> I doubt, I doubt with a joke like that that he could read, but uh, <laughs> there in your screen there is number nine, that's Sharon's Royale, and this one trained by Richard Whitaker. Certainly got a chance, Sharon's Royale. And, uh, well, last time out at York, ran a cracking race on ground. I thought that was uh, too firm for him behind Hard Desire, and he's a horse who's won on the soft, and he's also won on the heavy ground. And uh, certainly I think that... Uh, at the end of this race, he'll be staying on when some of the others perhaps will be getting a little bit more tired. Here. Yeah, it's, as we said earlier, it's a difficult heat. If I was given a free bet in the race, I'd back Profit of Prawn. But we're talking of betting. We'll give you the latest. There it is. Positive Attitude, 7 to 1. Charming Molly, 8 to 1. Mystery Music, 9 to 1. 12 to 1. Bar. What about you, John? What would you bet? Well, I think if I wasn't having a pound on Sharon's Royal, it'd probably be uh, going for positive attitude. She's a nice filly. She was unlucky, I thought. So she got to, had a bad run up at York, came out and got when I mean, she was, well, she certainly had luck on her side when Turbo Speed beat her afterwards because she would finish second and then got the race on the disqualification. But she's a nice filly. She's been in good form all season. And uh, well, there's Charlie Nelson's runner just going in there, gin and orange. That's it, they break away, left the one eradicated. They uh, burst from the stalls and past the starter with Golden Bird being passed early on uh, by Royal Estimate. It's me, it's certainly up with the pace, and there's already about half a furlong between first and last. Last is Cirque, uh, but up front, Admiralty Way takes charge, and that goes on there by length. Two Royal Estimate in second, and it's me, and then Island Jet Setter, and 
Just in behind these come Siak and Angel's Kiss. And after that, what is the Eradicate Racing uh, mid-division at this stage? Positive attitude, not that far away. Neither is Swing Lucky. But it's a very, very fast pace indeed. I should be surprised if the horse in front, Admiralty Way, stays in front. Island Jetter, etc. is second. Then in third is uh, Royal Estimate, fourth. Uh, making ground on the outside of the pack, Deputy Tim. Just in behind these, Admiralty, uh, it comes uh, Siak and Gin and Orange. And Cirque is still towards the back as they begin the turn out of the back, out of the back straight. And Admiralty Way, the further they go, the further he goes clear. It's an amazing performance, this. And it's Admiralty Way and uh, being joined now uh, by Royal Estimate. Wide of these is Island Jet Setter. And I'm doing Admiralty Way a misfavour because, in fact, Swing Lucky that it is that's uh, going two and a half clear with two and a half to run. Swing Lucky clear of Island Jet Setter. Then comes Royal Estimate. Deputy Tim is staying on. After these comes Charming Molly. They've got uh, two furlongs to go and Swing Lucky still in the lead uh, but coming back to the field, a furlong and a half to travel. Island Jet Setter, Royal Estimate just in behind these. Charming Molly is making good progress wide in the pale jacket. They're inside the final furlong. Uh, Prophet up Rondra is finishing well too in red and white checks and it's still Swing Lucky in the lead. Swing Lucky, Royal Estimate, Prophet of Prandra, Deputy Tim, Island Jet Setter. And as they come up towards the line, I'm going to be made to eat five words or am I? It's going to be close at the line. It's a three-way photo between Swing Lucky, Royal Estimate and Cirque who came from last to share virtually first place on the line. Behind these, Prophet of Prandra and Island Jet Setter and Deputy Tim. Then Sharon's Royal and Charming Molly. And behind these, Cheek and Mir, then Admiralty Way. And behind that one, Golden Burn, Vinton Var, uh, followed down by It's Me. And so the result, or the outcome of this Labrooks Ayrshire handicap, it's a three-way photo between sticking his neck out in the middle of the back there is number 21, Swing Lucky, who was so far clear on the home turn that I thought he's sure to be uh, beaten with a furlong to travel. But in fact, he's won, no doubt about it. The second horse, which is the one nearest to us in my judgment, that's number 18, Cirque, came from last to pass uh, 22 horses in the home straight and on the far side Royal Estimate is uh, battling in that photo for second and third place I think we'll find the fourth horse home number eight Prophet of Prandra and so this swing lucky whoa I think if you'd taken 50 to 1 you wouldn't have wanted it on the home turn but I think that swing lucky has won at 50 to 1 and here from our low angle shot he's repelling Raiders but they came thick and fast inside the final furlong uh, Royal Estimate flying there, Prophet of Prandru in the red and white check colours, uh, but the blinkered Swing Lucky has held on, on the line, here comes Cirque with the white sleeve jacket, finishing well too. Well, very few horses have made all here at Air this week, but this one has, and John Frankham chuckled after they'd gone 100 yards, he couldn't believe that the leader was going so fast, but it says much for Swing Lucky's courage and the enterprise shown by his rider that he lasted home, and John here, I thought as uh, uh, they went into the closing stages that the distress signals were beginning to be sent out and uh, that he might tie up, but he seemed to find a little bit more when the others came to him, spurred on perhaps. Well, you wouldn't have expected him, to, or you could have expected him to have tied up because he ran over five furlongs here just a couple of days ago. And at this point, they began to come and close in on him. And I, for one, certainly, being, uh, being as he'd had a run here a couple of days ago, fully expected him to be caught. But Gary Bardwell just kept him going, hands and heels. And, well, the line came just in time. The winning post is always in the same place, so it's no good making excuses for all the others. Royal Estimate ran his heart out there into second uh, place. That's in the orange colours on the far side. And then just look for the horse coming really late and fast on this side in the red colours. That's Cirque. Gary Hind riding that one with the blinkers. He was last at the beginning, couldn't even begin to go the pace early on flying at the death and he looks uh, certainly nailed on when he runs over a mile and a furlong somewhere and swing lucky is lucky for those bookmakers a 50 to 1 screamer swing lucky it looked a wide open handicap they went 10 to 1 the field in the offices this morning it's returned at 50 to 1 that swing lucky involved in the photograph for the places circ is a 16 to 1 chance so is royal estimate also sent off at 16 to 1 and profit up is a 14 to 1 chance they made positive attitude the 7 to 1 favorite but the bookmakers lost in big bets alone on Michelozzo in the ledger over a hundred thousand pounds. Here it comes in now. Second, Swing number lucky. 10. Number uh, ten number is 18. Royal Royal Estimate number second. Eight. Cirque is third, and Prophet Prandra is fourth. So the result again. Swing lucky fifty to one. 
beats Royal Estimate 16 to 1. Cirque is third at 16 to 1. Prophet Abrand fourth at 14 to 1. Positive Attitude, the 7 to 1 favourite. Well, the bookmakers lost £100,000 in big bets alone, as I was saying, on Michelozzo. But my goodness, they have big results here, to, here at the meeting so far. Joveworth, 50 to 1, the longest price winner ever of the Six Furlong Air Gold Cup. And also today we've had Karaki, double carpet, 33 to 1. So more than enough consolation for the bookies. They're still smarting over Michelozzo, but they're grinning now. Swing lucky, 50 to 1. First number 21, Swing Lucky at 50 to 1. Second number 10, Royal Estimate, 16 to 1. Third number 18, Circe, again at 16 to 1. And the fourth horse, number 8, Profit Apron at 14 to 1. Number 5, Positive Attitude, was the 7 to 1 favourite and 24 round. And a catch trick in the 4.15, the winner here, number 9, J.R. Jones at 25 to 1. Second number 5, Capstar at 9 to 1. And third, number 13, Orchard Court at 14 to 1. Number 2, Star Child was the 4 to 1 favourite on non runner number 16 and 15 round. I just talked to Mike Dillon of Labrooks. He said, oh, it's a very bad result for the, for the bookies. 50 to 1 winner here and a 50 to 1 winner of the Labrooks Air Gold Cup. No wonder they're laughing at the other side. This fella's done very, very well indeed. Well done. And uh, we're doing a disservice to the winning jockey there. That was actually Neil Kennedy who rode the horse, not Gary Bardo, who was down in all the morning papers for it. And that's only his second one of the season and his third in all for the young 20-year-old who rode a super race. Well, we've got an absolutely massive crowd who are enjoying the brilliantly warm sunshine. You know, it's been actually almost felt like cold winter early on this uh, week. We had Hurricane Hamish on Thursday, but now it's back to high summer and the conditions are absolutely beautiful for what is turning out to be the biggest day's racing they've had in Scotland for many a year. Look at that, over 20,000 pounds. We'll be looking back and talking to the expert about the drainage and what's gone wrong at Doncaster, and that'll be coming up right after the break. Perth races this Wednesday and Thursday in the beautiful grounds of Schoon Palace Park. Free parking, full catering facilities. First race, 2.15. Whatever your taste in family motoring, whether you prefer something small but perfectly formed, or you like to drive something that's just a little less discreet, there's an easy way to find a low motor insurance quote. Looks like a job for the man in the big glasses. Whoever you are, whatever your car, when you want to search out the best policy from over 70 available through Swinton Insurance, call your local branch for a free quote, because nobody looks harder than the man in big glasses. Cousin Wilna had a windfall. I'm rich! Rich! I'm rich! And of course she wanted to make the most of it, so we agreed to help. We said yes to a current account that pays interest. I think I'll take it. We said yes to a unit trust with an income. I'll take it. And we said yes to a bond for growth. Five dozen, please. Currently, we manage over one and a half billion pounds worth of unit trusts and help nearly three million savers, more, in fact, than any other bank. If you want to make the most of your money, the answer's T-E-S-P. <laughs> Time to stop. Make it McDonald's to go. A visit to McDonald's makes your day.
Does a smarty get detention for being out choco late? Now, how many colours count as a bite? Who put the art in smarties? How far can a tube go? Who knows? Do the reds go purple when they play the blues? Does milk chocolate taste better after dark? Yum, yum. Only smarties have the answer. Just an update on the uh, St. Ledger news. Uh, we were talking that the winner might be supplemented at the late entry stage for next month's uh, Prix de l'Art de Triomphe in Paris, but owner Charles St. George discounted that theory. Uh, he said that the horse is most unlikely to go for the art because he's still very immature. That's what Steve Coulth and Henry Cecil were saying, but he will be kept in training next year as a four-year-old, and what a four-year-old he is going to be. Other news, well, Rosie at turn, no excuses, said Willie Carson as he came in, finished third. Sapiens, Kieran Fallon, fantastic first ride in a classic, he said, but uh, ran very well, but didn't find the extra gear of the winner and the fourth place terraman mark burke really? said he didn't really? think he quite stayed the trip on that sort of grounds so that brings you right up to date with news on the St. ledger now how did the uh, jockey stand in the victorious club league table this is the prize that goes to the leading jockey of the meeting here yeah, at uh, air the great western yeah. meeting and at the moment we've got a four-way tie for the lead steve cawthon Dean McEwen, Jimmy Fortune and Alan Munro, those are the two apprentices, all on two winners apiece. Two winners apiece, so if anybody can ride another winner, they'll get a lovely trophy plus £100 for the injured jockeys. Right, news of the drainage problems in a moment, but now let's have news of a tote return from the last race. JT. Yes, and quite a remarkable return, actually. £92.20 about that winner, number 21, Swing Lucky. And it paid £13.60 for the place. The other places, £6.30, £4.10 and £2.90. The dual forecast came to £3,000, and twenty pence and 24 rand. Well, as you know by now, the reason that today's St. Ledger was run here at Air was because of the serious and sudden problems which Doncaster had with the ground, which resulted in this horrific fall in last week's Portland handicap, where Madraco fell, Paul Cook on Madraco, bringing down Pendor Dancer with Ian Johnson, and then just following that, Tolo and Ray Cochran. Well then, just two days later, Billy Nunes was galloping along merrily in front on Able Player when exactly the same thing happened to him. Well, after that second fall, the stewards immediately inspected the course and found a very forced patch of ground just about the place where those two horses had fallen over as they promptly abandoned racing. And then they called in the expert drainage, or the expert in drainage, Mr John Souter. John? Thank you for coming along and talking to us. The first thing is, what exactly went wrong there at Doncaster? It was basically very simple. The uh, drainage had been installed in the month of July, and as you know, this summer was probably the driest year that uh, we have had since 1974-75, and the turf was put back to about six inches on top of the gravel, and with the clay ground uh, all around, it started to crack and the gravel sunk slightly, uh, probably about... And, and just explain to us what exactly happens when they put the drains in. They use a round clay tile, do they? Yes, the, the clay tile is put on the bottom of the drain, then it was backfilled with gravel to six inches from the top. They then replaced the turf back on the top, uh, on top of the gravel, which was uh, meeting. And this summer, due to the, the very dry conditions, the clay on either side of the drain started to crack and the gravel started to sink or move into the pore space of the clay. Uh, unfortunately, in a normal wet season, the uh, water would have come down through and the material in the soil would have gone into the pore space of the, the, the big gravel. But this year, with the very excessively dry conditions, the, the soil remained absolutely static on the top. And when they were running the tractors over the top, nothing happened. And when you prodded in the, the stick to test the going, uh, 
it went in but didn't move. Well, we saw the stewards inspecting the course, but should they have been aware of that prior to the Wednesday before racing, given the dry summer that we've had? They would never... This is the first time that I have ever seen uh, this sort of thing happen. And presumably, I mean, it's a major problem. What are their chances of uh, getting the ground back ready for racing before the end of this flat season? Well, we're carrying out a survey at the moment and we will be on site all this week coming and uh, we'll be making a final inspection on the, the 12th of October. And will all of the drains have to come up? Presumably, we will have to inspect everything that was laid down. Well, we're digging everything out at the moment and any, any part that there's a problem will be replaced. And, I mean, how about other uh, race courses in the country? Have the Jockey Club asked you to go back through and uh, look out specific courses which have set on similar soil to Doncaster's? Well, uh, I was speaking to Mr Charles Weatherby earlier this week, so we have a meeting which he's fi fixing up at the moment in London at the Portman Square. And presumably, is that the courses that are going to get this sort of problems are the ones that are on the clay that have been drained. I mean, just how many courses? Do we know how many courses have been drained recently in the last couple of seasons? Well, I don't know as I stand here, but obviously uh, all the different courses will be reporting to the Jockey Club at the moment, and if an inspection has to be made, then I think that this will be done. Well, that's the drainage out of the way. What? You're, I mean, you are an expert in drains. What I'm really interested in is we're just about to start all-weather racing now in this country. And as far as I can see, the biggest problem when we put all weather gallops in, everybody complains at some stage during the winter that they have problems with drainage. What are we doing wrong? Well, the simple thing about drainage is that unless you get the, the, an outlet point, that is uh, an outlet manhole chamber that can take the water away at the correct rate when it pours it down during the bad months of the season and interconnect that all the way back through to the far end of the course or the far end of the drainage uh, track, and if that material that you put in the top, in other words, it must be spotlessly clean, uh, 10 to 12 millimetre gravel placed above the drain, if that material is then uh, superimposed by dirty material, then the water will stop at this point. But if it's put straight through to the top with clean, graded sands, grits and gravels, it should be able to take away anything up to 10 inches of rainfall in 24 hours. And one final question, we've got two all-weather courses coming up at Sutherland Lingfield. Are we draining them properly and do we think we're putting the right surface on them? Well, that is a, a you know, $64,000 question. Uh, I think that, that Lingfield is opening on the, the 30th of uh, October and you know, we should have a good idea then. I do know that, that they have taken as many precautions as they can as far as the drainage is concerned. Well, it won't be long now before we find out whether John's right or not. That was Mr John Souter keeping us up to date with what actually went wrong at Doncaster. Fascinating interview, that wasn't it? Well, behind me, the paddock, horses just coming into the paddock. Jockeys haven't even uh, got mounted yet, so they're running a little bit behind with this 4.45 race. So now let's look back on what was the big betting race of the whole week, the £40,000 Ladbrokes Air Gold Cup. 29 runners, a real shock result. We pick it up as the field approach the halfway stage. There's the money in the blue with a pink cap leading from Joe Sugden and Anodyne on the far side. Then Joe Worth and behind these comes uh, Joe Sugden and Aries Express ridden along. Master Pokey ridden along too and Anodyne goes for home. Just over two furlongs to go. Anodyne down the centre of the track from Joe Worth pressing hard. Behind these comes Joe Sugden and Aries Express and where's the money? Master Pokey looking for room. A furlong and a half to go. And Joe Worth the grey from Anodyne. And then just in behind these young Kerr away with a green sleeve jacket starting to make ground to Chaplin. Club is coming with a run. Eastern Ember, Anna Jack finishing fast and late on the stand side, but Joe Worth has it from Chaplin's Club. And Anna Jack, Copper Mill Lad is finishing fast up towards the line. Joe Worth's going to hold on. Joe Worth wins at Chaplin's Club, second yet again. Anna Jack and Copper Mill Lad. Joe Worth uh, winning at 50 to 1, providing first season trainer Michael O'Neill with a fantastic success in such a valuable competitive sprint. Anyway, let's now have an SP from Newbury. And it's the 4.30, won by number 16, Hedber at 4 to 1. Second number 7, Van Quaddock, the 9 to 4 favourite. And third number 23, Silver Singing at 6 to 1. And runners numbers 3 at 11 and 22 ran. At Worcester, the 4.30 was won by number 1, Carnides at 2 to 1. Second number 3, Royal Craftsman, the 6 to 4 on favourite. And third number 2, High Class Agent, returned at 22 to 1 and 7 ran. 
And of market raisin, the 4.30 was won by number eight, Dorky Sound at 10 to one. Second number six, Blazing Walker, the two to one on favorite. And third number one, Rockcliffe at three to one and 10 ran. Very mixed results coming in from around the country for both the punters and the bookmakers. Hope you got out on Michelozzo and made your money on that. Right, the bidding here, let's go down your card. Only a few runners in the race. This dancing music opened seven to four. They're now showing 13 to eight against it. It was six to four just a moment ago. 30 to eight, the fair price against that. 10 to one against Western Music. On the shoulders, nine to two, Case Law. 20 to one, keep on running. And it's now out to three to one, Amron from five to two. It's 12 to one, Mrs. Gray. And bits of pieces for the bottom thing, Miss Knight from 20 to one into 100 to six. But they're now showing 13 to eight, this favorite, dancing music. Well, behind me, the jockeys have just got mounted for our last live race, so it's still going to take them a few minutes to get down to the start. So what we've done, we've brought forward uh, a few of the day's highlights. Let's look back now on how today's finishes fared here at Air in our review of the day. and Steve Corkin coming back after winning the St. Ledger by eight lengths. We'll be finishing the programme with him. Now the other finishes. They've got a furlong and a half to go behind these. Mark Azel, one of the blue blinkers, starts to uh, pick up good ground. Sudden victory has it, though, and clear by some six to eight lengths to a hard-ridden Mark Hazelwood, who's making ground on sudden victory as they come inside the final furlong. And the jockey on sudden victory looks round, and he sees Mark Hazelwood closing with every stride, but the post will come in time, and sudden victory will win. And at the line, sudden victory is the winner, Mark Hazelwood second. Still a furlong and a half to go. Don't rule out Fearless Native on the right of the picture, still just down to the final furlong. Obelisky and Fearless Native putting in a big challenge. Gushy looks held in third. They come inside the final furlong, and Obelisky going on now from Fearless Native, wandering about on this tiring ground. But Obelisky has it clear by three or four. Up towards the line, Obelisky. Obelisky's going to win it up the line. Obelisky is the winner. Fearless Native second, Gushy is third. But it's still Karaki who heads the charge from Oriental Splendor with the green jacket inside the final furlong. And Karaki keeps up the mend of it, Toit and Oriental Splendor. And here comes Be My Runner, finishing fast, having been last sharp thistle inside the final furlong. And Karaki to the line. Karaki has it at the post. Karaki is the winner. Be My Runner second. A furlong and a half to travel. Island Jets at a Royal Estimate just in behind these. Charming Molly is making good progress wide in the pale jacket. They're inside the final furlong. Uh, Prophet up Rondra is finishing well too in red and white checks and it's still Swing Lucky in the lead. Swing Lucky, Royal Estimate, Prophet of Prandra, Deputy Tim, Island Jet Setter. As they come up towards the line, I'm going to be made to eat five words or am I? It's going to be close at the line. It's a three-way photo between Swing Lucky, Royal Estimate and Cirque who came from last to share virtually first place on the line. Behind these, Prophet of Prandra and Island Jet Setter and Deputy and here are the prices on today's winners at air. The two o'clock won by number one, Sudden Victory, seven to two on favourite. And the 235 went to number four, Obelisky, at three to one. The 310 was won by number 14, Karaki, 33 to one. And the 345 by number three, Mitchell Lotso, the six to four favourite. The 415 went to number 21, Swing Lucky, at 50 to one. So, one more race to come here on Channel 4 Racing today. This is the Top Flight Leisure Nursery. It's over five furlongs and the seven two-year-olds are named by Gigi. And they're headed by number one, Dancing Music. The stall's placed on the stands rail. Dancing Music is drawn six and ridden by John Carroll. Two Western Music at one, Dean McEwen. Three, Case Law at seven, Barry Lane claims to seven. Number four, Keep On Running is Blinkered. Kevin Darley rides and drawn five. Five is Amron at three, Willie Carson. Six, Mrs. Gray Blinkered at two, Gary Barbwood at number seven, Miss Knight. John Lowe putting up a pound overweight and drawn four. They're at the start. Let's check the odds. And Dancing Music, the 13 to 8 favourite, opened up at 6 to 4. Amron, 100 to 30. Case Law is 9 to 2 from 7 to 2. And Western Music, 10 to 1 from 9. Mrs. Gray out to 12 to 1, open up at 9 to 1. And Miss Knight is 16 to 1 from 20s. Keep on running the 20 to 1 chance, and they're all quoted. Well, there's number one, Dancing Music, the favourite. He's got plenty of weight, though, nine stone ten, but his form is good. And last time out, just failed to give Mademoiselle Chloe ten pounds at York. And as the winner has since come out and won well here at air this week, then the form of this York race looks pretty good. 
and dancing music stretches and goes to clear of Sir Arthur Hobbs, the danger is Manzel Chloe in the yellow colours on the outside and that's finishing uh, to some effect as they come inside the final furlong and it's Manzel Chloe who comes in to take the race dancing music tries to fight back Manzel Chloe has it but hanging in a bit towards the rails Manzel Chloe and dancing music will be close a photo a uh, tremendous effort by Dancing Music, who was conceding Mademoiselle Chloe £10. <laughs> so, in effect, uh, if you, the handicapper had to put her in the nursery today. Um, prior to her win here earlier in the week, he'd give her £9 less than Dancing Music, and I think she'd be 2 or 3 to 1 on John. Certainly, and uh, he's a tough horse. He's shown that he goes on the soft ground. He won over five furlongs at uh, Leicester early on in the season. John Carroll, who rides him, took him down to the start nice and quietly alongside the rail. Well... John said he's won on the soft ground uh, and he has got the best form but he's got nine stone ten to carry and really it's a combination of uh, whether his strength lasts out in these gruelling conditions and these were points I discussed with John before racing I mean we've got three in the race and he's the one I've picked he's a good horse I mean he's he's proved himself on soft ground he won six lengths first time out at Leicester that was soft and he's, he's a good horse I think I think he'd carry the weight you know if they if they don't go mad and, John, you often force the pace on the horse. Are you reluctant to do that today? I hope to be up there, because he does get a little bit disappointed when he gets headed, you know. He, but, I mean, he's a strong at the last, like I say, and I'm, I feel confident he'll do it. There you are. Nothing like confidence from the rider. And, as he said, one of three that Jack Berry has here. The others are Amron and keep on running. Uh, loading up steadily. Ready installed and nearest to us is uh, Case Law. Barry Lane riding this one for Mark Prescott. And the hands are doing a good job there. Just got a hold of his ear because I think he was getting a little bit nervous, this one. And uh, doing a good job. Acts like putting a twitch on their nose, just keeping a tight hold of their ear. And Case Law, Colt by Ahanora. Not got the best for draws this side. If uh, things are working out as you've seen him, they're all off. Over to you, Gigi. And dancing music was very smartly to its stride, but Case Law very smartly away to basic next to the rails down the centre of the track. Miss Knight, uh, he's just settled in behind Amron and keep on running, racing fast. Mrs. Gray chased along in the striped jacket at the back of the field uh, with Western music just in front of her. And uh, they're edging over to the centre of the track and it's dancing music uh, in the blue and white colours with three furlongs to go who just has the call over Case Law. Then keep on running, Amron in the yellow jacket on the outside of the pack, Western music. And uh, just in behind these uh, races, Miss Knight, they've got two to go, the top weight dancing music, bravely just has it but pressed on the outside, the horse with a white face and the jockey in the red jacket is Western Music, they've got a furlong and a half to go, dancing music clear from Western Music, keep on running, Case Law tries to come with a run, they're inside the final furlong and dancing music bravely goes to ahead of keep on running in second and case law and western music and they race up towards the line and what a big performance this is by the top weight dancing music is going to hold on and dancing music wins it in the photo second case law keep on running western music clear of miss knight and ron and mrs gray and so the result of this top flight leisure nursery handicap it's a win for number one dancing music in the colours of Mr. Norman Harper, trader Cockerham by Jack Berry, the 13 to 8 favourite, ridden by John Carroll. It's going to be close for second, but our winner, Dancing Music, was clear, as we can see from our worm's eye view as they hurtle towards the track. It's close for second. Case Law on the left, the horse with the white face, Barry Lane riding that one in the dark jacket. Also in that photo is the red and white colours that keep on running, and on the far side of the red jacket is Western Music, but it's Dancing Music who holds the notes today. Well, throughout the week, not many form, uh, form horses or so-called form horses have actually come and uh, done the business, so to speak. But uh, Dancing Music with a form to win this race and a uh, form on the ground uh, proved well able to uh, shrug off his welter burden of 9-10. And just about a furlong and a half from home, John, he spurted into about a two, two and a half length advantage. And that served him through those final uh, testing 200 yards or so. Yeah, John Carroll who rode him, he was very confident before the race and I should think that he was always pretty confident throughout the race he's just caught hold of him here just about the furlong and a half marker and he's really got his head down and begun to gallop then and then the horse just chasing him there on the left with the uh, white colours with the red armlets that's keep on running but look over to the left case law and uh, Barry Lane riding that one and at this stage I thought well if the nine stone ten begins to have its toll on dancing music then uh, Case Law would be the one to go and take advantage of it, but John Carroll's just kept him going, hasn't actually picked his whip up, 
just kept him going hands and heels and case law i think just gets up to take second place ahead of keep on running and western music so there you are dancing music the 13 to 8 favorite of the top flight leisure nursery handicap The, the Irish authorities weren't at all pleased with the transfer of our St. Ledger from Doncaster to Air because it clashed with their own all-aged version uh, at the Curra. Uh, but in fact, that race produced a desperate finish, a desperate finish between Tyrone Bridge and Petit Eel, which would have given us entirely the wrong tip for our race. Lake. They're racing down now towards the final furlong and a half and Tyrone Bridge comes to challenge on the far side Lazaz on the near side Petit Eel Phantom Breeze in behind them and four and uh, then upper Strada but it's Tyrone Bridge the leader on the near side Petit Eel and they're followed by Lazaz as they race into the closing stages Petit Eel on the near side on the far side Tyrone Bridge is going to be very close between them as they race towards the finish Petit Eel on the near side Tyrone Bridge on the far side neck and neck as they flash across the line possibly just Tyrone Bridge from Petit Eel Lazaz three upper Strada four Five and the starting prices, first number 10, Petit Hill, 3 to 1 favourite, second number 9, Tyrone Bridge at 8 to 1, and third number 2, Lazars at 6 to 1. A non-runner was number 7 and 10 round. And a catch in the 4.45 is the Stewart's Inquiry, but here's the finishing order. First number 4, Nicholas Mark, 11 to 4. Second number 1, Chimeric at 9 to 1. And third, number six, musical leader, again at 9 to 1. Number 2, Sam Cocktail was the 9 to 4 favourite and 12 round. And today's winners at Newbury, headed by the two o'clock winner, number seven, Rivers Rhapsody at 15 to two. The 2.30 won by number five, Brashi, seven to one co-favorite. And the three o'clock was won by number 13, Monastery at seven to one. The 3.30 went to number six, Wellnley at nine to one. And the four o'clock to number seven, Dancing Tribute, the 11 to four favorite. The 4.30 was won by number 16, Heber at four to one. And at air in the 4.45, the full SP won Dancing Music, 13 to eight favorite. Three case law nine to two, and four keep on running at twenty five to one and seven round. Dancing music providing Jack Barry with his eighty eighth winner of the season. He's twelve off that elusive century. So that brings you completely up to date. Let's now take a look ahead to what we've got coming up on Channel Four in October. Look at this ten days Newmarket, the fourth, fifth, and sixth, and look at this this marvellous triple header Newmarket, Longchamp, Phoenix Park, and then on the Sunday live and exclusive coverage of the Chiga Prix de l'Art de Triomphe. Back home to York on the fourteenth. Back to Newmarket headquarters for three more days, and then we round off at Doncaster. Ten top class. Days racing coming up on Channel 4. And also, don't forget, on the morning of October the 7th, Saturday morning, it's the start of our Channel 4 Racing's morning line every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock throughout the winter. I hope you'll join us at 9 o'clock. So these big crowds here at Air have thoroughly enjoyed seeing their first ever classic. And another man who certainly enjoyed it was Steve Cawthon. He won it by eight lengths on Michelozzo. Bye-bye.